this week we have had some very interesting weather. <laughs> it's downpouring one second, it's hot and humid the next. I wish I had a good ponytail because it just doesn't work for me. Um, just hot and sweaty. So in between the storms today, I wanted to try and uh, talk to you a little bit about alliums. So I have a lot of alliums in my yard. So right here, and of course these are all finished now. So this is Globemaster. Um, and I'm going to show you pictures of when all this is in bloom. So Globemaster, I have this bed completely planted. So when, when alliums die, the foliage really uh, dies back very quickly and it's very ugly. So I have it interplanted with uh, catmint, with, uh, in this case, a bobo hydrangea. I've got salvias. Um, I've got lots of daylilies and stuff like that. So it's a good way to try to hide some of that foliage. So Globemaster is my favorite. This is my favorite, favorite bed. So swinging right over here, this is an allium. Um, these are like large garlic chives, it's called. Um, I know there are a lot of brands on the market. I've had these forever, so I don't even know what they are when I bought them. Um, there's Serendipity, there's Millennium, there's a lot of different ones. So these have a nice little purple head and really they look like chives. Um, I don't eat them. Um, but we actually divided the ones we have in our front yard because they were so massive. And we have now one, two, three, four, five, six. We have like six big clumps this year. The great thing about alliums is their garlic. Um, they should, in theory, and they do, the, the critters don't eat them, so they should keep away deer and rabbits and voles and moles and things like that because they don't like the scent. I try to plant them near things that they do eat, so hopefully that will work. All right, here we go. These guys finally opened up again. I don't know what variety I've, I have because I've had them forever, but they're basically like a large garlic chive with a really pretty lavender pom-pom. I've divided these now several times because they're just getting massive. So let's take a look at a couple of other um, alliums that are now past their prime. Another one of the, um, I've tried last year to start adding even more alliums. I still have a lot from last year, but the great thing about alliums is they clump up. Um, you will get more over time. So this was uh, Gladiator. So you can see, obviously these are past their prime now. Um, actually, there's not even any leaves over here, but I do have them hidden with, you know, dahlias and stuff among them, and the dahlias are starting. Well, again, all my dahlias are in pots this year. So this one, obviously, they're all finished. So come on over here. This was Pinball Wizard. And, you know, they still look really pretty. A lot of people like to dry them, uh, spray them with, the, you know, like silver or gold for Christmas. Um, use them for decorations and stuff um, at the holidays. I don't typically do that, um, but I do leave them up as long as I can, you know, until they really start falling down. Because what I find, especially with the Globe Masters, I do find after a point, they just, they just, you need to either take them out, cut them down because they, they just, they're gone. They're gone. So let's take a look at some more. So this is Allium Schubertii, Shibert, I think is maybe the way you say it. And you can see that even after this is finished blooming, it is gorgeous with these starbursts. I mean, this is so architectural. I love it. Uh, but again, the foliage has died down. I have this right at the very front here. Um, so I don't have anything in front of it because we have an irrigation line under it. But, you know, behind it, I actually have some mums, Baptisia. I have it surrounded with some flocks. So as long as this is looking good, I'm going to be leaving this right here where it is. Uh, let's see what else we have. We have drumstick alliums. Let's go take a look at those. Oh, we can't walk by. Daylilies are starting to open up. This is my first one. This is African chant. Look how pretty this is. Gorgeous maroon with a yellow throat. Okay, side note. Okay, so this is a drumstick allium. I won't even attempt to say the actual name, like Spathophelon or something like that. So it... it comes up. It's green and red. It's beautiful. I have, I think in this bed, I might have about a hundred of these planted um, and clusters of like 25. I have some here. I have some there. I have some over there. 
So there are a lot of them. And this is a later one. So you can see this hasn't bloomed yet. I have it here. It's among the asters and the helleniums and the drops of Jupiter. Like I said, we've had some downpouring rain. So things are kind of, <laughs> things are kind of, you know, all drooped over at the moment. But, um, you know, we needed, we really needed the rain. So it's hard to complain. So this is a drumstick allium. Okay, so these were Mount Everest. This is a gorgeous, big white pom-pom. Um, again, they look lovely after they finish. I'm leaving them up until they're, you know, completely, you know, useless. Um, I have them here interplanted with um, daisies. This is spun silk from Proven Winners. I have dahlias around it. I have cone flowers, uh, catmint, uh, eucara, all kinds of stuff in this bed. I'm loving this bed. This is one of our uh, new beds that we extended last year, uh, made it a little bit bigger, added a lot of stuff. Um, when we put in the greenhouse, we moved some things, so we had to do a lot of rework and stuff. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go inside because, like I said, the weather's been very iffy. Um, and I'm going to go through the, the alliums that I have and, um, you know, what I love about them and the characteristics and the zones. Pretty, pretty much all the zones are three through eight for alliums. Um, they're very, very hardy. And like I said, they don't, not like tulips, they don't have to get dug up in the spring. I mean, in the fall, um, in the spring, whatever, <laughs> you don't have to overwinter them, um, in my zone anyway. Um, just like daffodils, they stay in the ground, they bulk up year after year. So let's go inside and we'll look at each one of these varieties that I have. There are tons and tons of alliums. Obviously I don't have them all. I'm working on that. <laughs> so let's go, go uh, see some specifics about all the alliums. My absolute favorite is the Allium Giant Globemaster. <laughs> These giants are like 10 inches in diameter, gorgeous violet purple balls from the minute they open, even as almost seed pods, they're gorgeous. They're the largest of all the alliums. They're almost like bowling balls for goodness sakes. Um, dense heads that have tons and hundreds of uh, little florets. The stems are like two to three feet tall and hold the flowers nice and tall. Big blooms, deer resistant, beautiful cut flower. They get 30 to 36 inches tall and you plant them in the fall six inches deep. The pollinators absolutely love the alliums. This bed attracts them like crazy between the nepeta the alliums, salvia, it's just, and there's no hanging a planter in there. I did it one year, but there's no way to get in there and water it, so um, I don't. But you can see these are still beautiful even after they're starting to lose their color. This is Allium Globemaster in this, in this bed. Another variety of the ornamental onions that I have, and again, these bloom late spring to early summer, add spectacular architectural dimension. They're great cut and dried flowers and pollinator attractors. This is Allium ostara, um, and this is a cross between two other um, ones. It's got a beautiful reddish um, color to it. Um, those deep red purple flowers on it, uh, nice stocky stems and wide leaves, like 10 to 12 inches. Um, this is a really lovely one. I have this in a different border. Um, again, they make great cut flowers, put them in a sunny, well-drained location, and they'll be very happy for years. A new allium for me uh, this year is Gladiator. These are impressive blue violet alliums um, with six inch diameter flower heads, slightly smaller than the Globemasters, but they bloom earlier. They stand even a little taller and their foliage lasts a little bit longer. And what a great gap to fill in between, you know, your late spring bulbs, tulips, and those early summer perennials. You know, the deer don't eat them. They're great cut flowers. Again, same thing, plant them six inches deep. These grow like 35 to 45 inches tall. So I added a few this year. I'll be adding more for next year. So even you can see as the flower color um, dissipates, they are still architectural and make a lovely statement in your garden beds. So I leave mine up. 
in my front beds in front of my or mixed in with my uh, little lime hydrangeas I have Allium bulgaricum this has also got a new, another name Nectar uh, scordum siculum, siculum. <laughs> um, I still call it bulgaricum um, it's beautiful with sprays of cream and burgundy bells as the flowers fade the seed pods kind of you know look towards the sky they're great for uh, naturalizing which is really nice these are zone four through eight you want to plant these five inches deep they grow 24 to 30 inches tall so like I said in this bed they shoot high above my cat mint um, and early um, other flowers um, and you know after the tulips fade these take over in this bed which is really uh, lovely I love this one I've been planting it more and more of these for the last couple of years just so unique looking next up I added some pinball wizard uh, this year this is again a great choice for your garden for your containers big six to eight inch diameter globes almost as big as globe master but the stems are shorter and stockier um, slightly larger florets um, with a really pretty silvery sheen um, and again the seed heads look great even after the flowers fade thank you to Longfield uh, Gardens for this picture because mine were already gone uh, I didn't get a picture of them but again you can see that the seed heads still look great I've left them up um, also zone three through eight plant them five inches deep um, in the fall they get 24 to 32 inches tall and I'm going to add some more of these this year um, I only added I had a couple of these this year um, so I'm going to add a bunch more like I said I'm adding a lot of alliums I have a lot of trouble with voles and rabbits so maybe this will help keep them away allium uh, sapphorocephalon or drumstick allium as it's really known um, this gorgeous two-toned egg-shaped heads with the raspberry on the top and the green below the florets open slowly from the top down so it extends the show for weeks I think I planted about a hundred of these um, a little bit more informal look with the little slender stems um, great for a companion for grasses I have it growing up and around um, grasses and asters and holeniums uh, again deer resistant multiplies and returns year after year zones three through eight planted four inches deep grows 24 to 30 inches tall I, a very very unique like I said very slender stem so very different in look um, mine have not quite opened yet um, as you saw earlier um, in this video um, but they're just you know they're getting ready to pop so they're a little bit later than the globe masters and the pinball wizard and the gladi gladiators that have all finished blooming already um, same with Mount Everest has already finished but this one is a little bit later so you're extending your allium season even longer so allium atropurpurium I'm gonna be really upset if I lost these because I haven't seen them yet this year I don't know if I had some kids uh, pulling weeds for me I hope to goodness they didn't pull these out this is a great heirloom variety dark burgundy purple florets um, very tall stiff stems it makes a really nice dramatic color statement bold and upright good structure for the garden excellent cut flower with a long vase life of course deer resistant again zones four through eight you plant them five inches deep and they grow like 30 inches tall so again I really hope I did not lose these so this is why I have no after picture because I don't know where these are <laughs> which is heartbreaking um, but so I guess I'll be ordering more for next season <laughs> if you've never seen this al this allium schubertii in person you've got to plant it this is new for me this year they're shorter um, but the flowers are like a foot wide at least with these star like florets it looks like well it's perfect perfect for today's the fourth of July that I'm recording this and I mean this is perfect because it, it almost looks like the flower heads are exploding the seed heads last for weeks in the garden you can dry them for flower arrangements um, they're only 12 to 18 inches tall which is why you can see I have them in the very front of my border they're deer resistant zone three through eight plant them five eight uh, five inches deep and they do grow like I said only like 12 to 18 inches tall they are magnificent uh, just so unique it's so different than everything else 
whether they're in bloom with these little pink flowers on them or afterwards the seed heads are absolutely gorgeous this is a must try if you have no other alliums you want to take a look at this is a great one uh allium christophery christoph christoph Christophe, Christophe, I don't know how to say the other one, is similar to this, but much taller. <laughs> but the same kind of spiky flowers. <laughs> Chris, Christophe, Christopher, Christophe, I don't know how to say it. <laughs> Another new allium that I added for this year is Mount Everest. Um, these have that, you know, the snowy white kind of softball size um, round globes, very tall, straight stems. Um, here they're rise, they're literally rising up above the irises and the cypress in this bed um, and the nepeta. Um, they make a great dramatic presence in the garden. They bloom late in the spring, early summer, great cut flower. Uh, they will return year after year, zones three through eight, plant them five inches deep, grow 36 to 40 inches tall. So very, very tall. Um, very I think very architectural. You can see them up against my um, new greenhouse here. Love them. Uh, I'm going to be adding more of these for the coming season. You can see I have them over there, so I'm going to add more of them all around. Even afterwards, the seed heads are so pretty. The last one we're going to look at is um, one it's like giant chives, <laughs> I guess is the best way to call it. I don't know what uh, cultivar this is. I've had it for a very, very, lo very long time. I know Proven Winner sells a couple. One's called Millennium. Another's called Serendipity. Monrovia sells them. Everybody sells them. There are tons of different ones on the market. So it's got a, the one I have has a very um, pretty lavender head, um, blue-green foliage. It smells like an onion, obviously, when it's crushed. It's that, and um, they're very prolific. I've had to divide mine now a few times. Zone four through eight, typically, um, I'd have to say. All of the alliums, in case I haven't said it um, often enough, they're great for attracting bees and butterflies and other pollinators. This one probably grows like 15 to 20 inches tall. Um, and this one blooms midsummer to late summer. So this one is just opening. I just took this picture. So, but they're very long blooming. Um, and I thought I would leave you um, with some, uh, well, this is, this is um, it in bloom, but this is not my garden because mine are just starting to open. So I wanted to give you a, a little heads up. So um, at the very end here, I'll give you just some, some photos of other alliums that I've found um, in other places. Uh, I saw some, a beautiful stand down in the Hamptons um, and then some pictures from my garden. Another thing um, that I haven't mentioned yet, I have already ordered my tulips and my alliums for fall planting. So if you're planning on um, adding, whether it's daffodils or um, narcissus, I mean, or, or hyacinths or tulips or alliums or, or anything else for this um, fall, you need to start doing it now because things get sold out really quickly. So just a little side note there. Thank you as always for watching. Please subscribe, hit that like button. It really does make a difference. Um, down below the video, you'll see we have a link to our Amazon store with products that we like to use. So if it's something that you're uh, looking for, feel free to click on that. We do get a small percentage if you do that. But again, thank you so much. If you're watching my videos, if you're new to my channel, I really appreciate it. I'm so glad you found us um, and keep watching. You can see the dahlias are Dahlias are now starting to open up. This is Mystique, a gorgeous pink with almost like a purpley inside. So I'll bring you along to show you the dahlias as they come, come up.